1768, one of the country's leading citizens openly operated a lottery. His name was George Washington. And justification for running a lottery was sound enough. Money was needed to finance construction of the Mountain Road, a project that would open the way west from Virginia. But lotteries were already old hat by then. A year earlier, John Hancock's lottery had financed the rebuilding of historic Final Hall in Boston. Actually, lotteries developed in the fledgling nation around 1612, when they were used to finance the first American colony at Jamestown. And while everyone knows what happened in the year 1776, few people realize that the Continental Congress operated a lottery that year to support the Revolutionary Army. The year is 1986, the place, the Kansas capital. The situation is much like it's been throughout history, as the legislature diligently considers the state of the state. How could a multi-million dollar pool of funds be created to boost the state's economic initiative without putting an unwanted tax burden on the citizens? There was historical precedence, and so the legislature asked the people what they thought about a lottery. The people said yes. An undeniable majority in that November election, 64% of the state's voters cast their ballots in favor of a state-operated lottery. And a scant 200 working days later, the Kansas Lottery was up and away, with simultaneous celebrations in 21 different Kansas communities. There were lots of bands, balloons, and ballyhoo that day. And Kansans demonstrated their itch to stretch by buying more than 7 million instant tickets during the very first week. making business from within the constraints of state government called for a new perspective. It hadn't been done, at least not in Kansas. But fortunately, 27 other states had already paved the way, and the enabling of the Kansas lottery was patterned after sound, responsible, established procedures. We traveled across the country, learning new terminology. We studied effective administration procedures. We looked at draw shows, hardware and software, promotion and advertising, and security. We discovered that every successful lottery had first and foremost the trust of the people. And we came home knowing well that the opportunity to win had to be evenly and fairly shared by all who would play the Kansas lottery. It would be the people's lottery and we looked for opportunities to take it to the people, to the fairs, the festivals, the main streets, and gymnasiums. We named it Kansas Lottery Live. And it was exactly that, a live half-hour TV draw show with a weekly $25,000 jackpot and contestants from all across the state who spun the wheel to win millions and millions of dollars in cash and prizes. And we put it on wheels. Never before, anywhere in the country, had a live TV draw show hit the road every single week to be beamed via satellite to a network of television stations covering an entire state. But Kansas Lottery Live's caravan, including a satellite uplink unit, cast, and full crew, set up in Arkansas City, Colby, Dodge City, El Dorado, Garden City, Goodland, Great Bend, Hayes, Hutchinson, Kansas City, Liberal, Pittsburgh, Salina, Topeka, and Wichita, all in the first year. The response during the first year was overwhelming. Players bought and scratched more than 81 million instant tickets from some 2,800 Kansas Lottery retailers. 
And with the introduction of the online Lotto America and our very own cash lotto game, with the best odds of winning in the country, they purchased over 18 million play slips at more than 800 computer terminals. And they won. There were countless two, five, ten, and fifty dollar prices, camping and boating packages, and new cars. There were five thousand, ten, twenty-five, fifty, even hundred thousand dollar prizes. And two Kansans became big winners by any comparison, taking home six point one and eleven point four million dollars respectively. In all, players claimed $58,611,907 in prizes during our first year. Lottery sales soared from zero to an astounding $91,861,206 million in 12 months. So how would our forefathers, the Washingtons, Hancocks, and others, view the Kansas Lottery? Well, we think they'd be pleased. You see, like their own ventures, the real purpose behind the Kansas Lottery was to accomplish something. Something worthwhile. Something for the people. The future. During the past year, Nearly $8 million from the lottery sales has been invested in our state's future. Lottery sales have allowed Kansas to make investments in protecting our natural resources, in high-tech research at our universities, and in seed capital used to help start new businesses. Public television in Kansas got a $400,000 boost from the lottery, and last spring, Lottery sales helped in featuring our state and its products in the Bloomingdale department stores. Property taxpayers in Kansas benefited from the lottery, with almost six and a half million dollars sent to our counties for their reappraisal projects. Education, the arts, industry and agriculture all benefited from the Kansas Lottery's first year of operations. Lottery sales are making things happen in Kansas without taxation. That's important to every Kansas taxpayer. We believe our forefathers would also take note of another bright day in our Kansas lottery history book. It was June 8, 1988. On that day, a full year before it was due, the state received a check for $2,843,000 $321.24. It was payment in full, plus interest, of the loan acquired to begin lottery operations. Well, the first year is history, and looking back, we have to be proud of a lot of successes. Goals that were set have been met and exceeded. Economic development has gotten a significant shot in the arm, and it looks like the lottery will continue to play a big role in helping good things happen in Kansas. The future of the lottery is in the hands of a strong partnership, the Department of Commerce, Kansas Technology Enterprise Corporation, and Kansas Inc. Economic development interests, retailers, the legislature, and lottery staff. But most important, the future is in the hands of the players. You know, unlike the obligation of every citizen to pay taxes, nobody has to play the lottery. And yet, millions and millions of dollars from ticket sales have gone where tax money would have gone. Sort of a voluntary form of tax paying by the people who buy the tickets, scratch the squares, and pick the numbers. The people who play the Kansas Lottery. And from what we can tell from them, the people in Hayes and Hutchinson, the ones in Colby and Pittsburgh, in Wichita, Kansas City, Salina, Topeka, Seneca, nearly everywhere we've been. It's been a very good year out there, and the best may be yet to come, because Kansas seems to love its lottery. And thanks to the Kansas Lottery and all the economic development partners, the Kansas economy is right where it should be, in the hands of the people of Kansas.